Destroy All Monsters just turned 50 years old, and what better way to celebrate its anniversary than with a review? Destroy All Monsters was the third Godzilla film I saw when I was a kid. To be honest, I thought the movie was an animation based on the ADV film's VHS cover. So when I popped in the VHS and found out it was in fact live action, I was naturally disappointed at first. But I ended up liking the film regardless. As I grew older, there were other things about the film I became disappointed with. Destroy All Monsters borrows the same alien invasion plot that Toho has done before with films like The Mysterians, Battle in Outer Space, and Monster Zero. Unfortunately, Destroy All Monsters does nothing special with that trope like its predecessors did. The Keylocks are bland and boring. They give no reason as to why they want to invade the Earth. This makes them play into the stereotype that aliens are naturally evil, but the cliché plot would have been forgivable had the characters been developed better. For a movie with a fantastic cast, the characters are brutally underwritten. Akira Kubo gives a solid performance as the typical action hero, and it's pretty clear his character has some romantic link with Yukiko Kobayashi's character, but he shows very little emotion for her, especially when he finds out she's been possessed by the Keylock. Yukiko Kobayashi gives a great performance as a femme fatale, but her character is only a plot device to deliver exposition, and once she's freed from the Keylock's control, her character becomes useless. Jun Tazaki, Yoshio Tsuchiya, and Andrew Hughes are given very little to do but to deliver exposition and scientific jargon when the film requires it. Tsuchiya delivers a pretty swagger performance with the limited material and screen time he's given. The Keylock Queen takes center stage as the main villain, but she's given very little material to stand out as a solid villain like the Planet X Controller or the Black Hole Commander. Another big problem is how the monsters are handled. They are not the main focus of the movie, the Keylocks are. The monsters only serve as big guns and plot devices, and some monsters don't even do anything at all, like Varan and Baragon. As characters, they're given very little to do, the only exception being Godzilla, who is presented as the leader. The pacing is also an issue, as the film does get a little boring at times. I remember as a kid, I used to fast forward through all the human scenes just to get to the monster scenes because the film doesn't offer any interesting characters like Monster Zero or Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster did. The only thing Destroy All Monsters did deliver on was its special effects. And since we're on the subject, Destroy All Monsters has one of the best monster effects sequences in the entire Showa series. The Tokyo attack scene is truly a wondrous sight to behold, and the final battle with King Ghidorah is absolutely satisfying and mesmerizing. Akira Fukube delivers another great score that balances old themes and new themes. I do admit it gets a bit repetitive at times, but it doesn't get old. Overall, Destroy All Monsters may be heavily flawed, but I enjoy it regardless. Destroy All Monsters tends to be a fan favorite amongst fans, which I can understand why, but I feel that the film falls short to more superior films like Mothra vs. Godzilla, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, Monster Zero, and Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. Those films had well-written, entertaining characters that kept the plot interesting, while at the same time, balancing the screen time for the monsters. Destroy All Monsters is the opposite of those films. I have to admit, Destroy All Monsters tends to be over-glorified by fans, especially older fans, and just like my argument for Godzilla 98, I feel that nostalgia is a major factor when fans overpraise Destroy All Monsters. Take away all the monster scenes and what do you have left? A pretty bland film, wouldn't you say? The film has lackluster, uninteresting characters, a derivative plot that does nothing different, and monsters who are not even the main focus. An appropriate title for the film would be Destroy All Keylocks. It's an average film, but I don't consider it amongst one of the best Godzilla films since there are way better Godzilla films that did the same plot and characters Destroy All Monsters did, but better. Nonetheless, I still have some nostalgia for this film. This was my third Godzilla film after all, and it still holds some special place in my heart despite its flaws. The film offers no political or social commentary like most Godzilla films do, so I enjoy it as a piece of mindless sci-fi entertainment which is honestly the only way to enjoy this film. I award Destroy All Monsters 2 stars out of 4.